From Nutrient Ag Solutions, I'm Senior Meteorologist Andrew Pritchard with your Canadian Prairie Weather Story for Monday, October 23rd, 2023. We've got some stuff to talk about here over the next 7 to 10 days. We've got multiple storm systems tracking into the area. We've got a much colder shift in temperatures and some snow across the prairie over the next 5 to 10 days. So you look at the infrared satellite picture here getting started on Monday morning. We've got a very active jet stream pattern kind of broadly featuring some troughing across western North America and increasingly fast jet stream flow across the central United States. And it's along and north of that we'll see several disturbances tracking and bringing some snow to the region, some rain and some snow to portions of the prairie. And we'll kind of time that out here through this forecast video. But starting with Monday morning, again, getting it started here as the sun comes up, we do have some light snow falling parts of central Alberta, and then we've got some rain, maybe a couple embedded thunderstorms tracking out of the northern plains of the U.S. into parts of southeastern Saskatchewan and southern Manitoba. So a couple of corridors of precipitation here Monday morning, some snow in Alberta and some rain across southeastern Saskatchewan and southern Manitoba. We can look at the temperatures here, you see that sharp gradient kind of separating the freezing air off to the north and the above freezing air off to the south. So it's right along this zone where you get that tight temperature gradient. This is where we have the snow and this is where we're going to see the heaviest snow over the next 24 to 36 hours. Could see 10 to 15 centimeters in some areas with that snow being rather heavy at times. And it's in the areas shaded in red that we have those snowfall warnings from Environment Canada. This is where it's most likely we'll see that 10 to 15 centimeter snowfall. Again, with some of that snow being heavy heavy at times late this evening through the overnight and then into Tuesday morning. Last seven days of precipitation, again, it's been quite dry across the region, so this is good news to get some of that precipitation in. I hope most folks are kind of wrapping up fall field activities. I know this will really slow things down quite a bit as we accumulate some snow here, but this is some good news. You know, if we can kind of stack some snow up here, and the way I was kind of thinking about it, you know, we want to eradicate this moisture deficit here and doing so with a lot of snow through the depths of the winter is maybe not the best way to do it. We've got frozen soil and then a lot of that melts and maybe runs off. We don't absorb all of that snowfall as it melts, but we get some here on the front end of the winter season, put some snow down, bring in some late season warmth, melt that snow, kind of get some of that into the soil before we freeze it for the winter. This could be some good news. So I'm curious to see the impacts here. Again, as we talk about some precipitation across this region that's been quite dry, uh, you know, not just for the last weeks, but over the last few years as a whole. We'll look at the total forecast precipitation. This is kind of broadly speaking from the European ensemble model, the next seven days. So just kind of loosely looking at how much liquid precipitation is expected across the region. Across much of the prairie, we're talking about anywhere from, you know, 10 to 15 uh, millimeters of precipitation. We could be talking about more than that across parts of southern Manitoba, where we've got multiple storms tracking. And then the same thing across parts of central, maybe west central Alberta, where we could see some extended heavier snow, maybe some influence from the terrain there to stack up a little bit more, perhaps getting into that 25 to 30 millimeter range, something like that. We'll take a look at some closer precipitation forecasts in just a moment. And then just looking at the snowfall forecast from the European ensemble. Again, this is where we're looking at that pocket of 10 to 15 centimeters of snow over the next 24 to 36 hours. We'll then kind of see a series of storms just kind of taking progressively further south tracks, bringing corridors of precipitation, a lot of it snow as we head deeper into the week to parts of the northern plains and the Canadian prairies. Now here's what's going on. We've got a lot going on. We've got busy jet stream picture here. You see the corridors of faster flow. That's where you see the red shading. So we get these little corridors of faster jet stream flow, these short waves. Uh, and these are the instigators of storm systems and precipitation. So we've got something, you know, let me go ahead and flip it over to black. We'll do that. So here's one down here across the Baja you know, across, uh, the southwestern U.S. We've got fast flow across the North Pacific. I'm sorry, the Northern Atlantic. We've got fast flow rounding the base of a trough across the Hudson Bay. We've got some fast flow coming into British Columbia and Alberta. And then we've got a series of lows here across the Pacific as well. Embedded within that, we've even got these kind of weak, more subtle disturbances. So a lot of opportunities for precipitation across uh, across North America as a whole over the next seven to 10 days. A very busy pattern, a burst of very active jet stream flow. So we put this into motion, this is what happens. We really see the area of low pressure to our west kind of set up shop. And this is what I'm talking about. We get deeper into the week. This is where we'll see the best lift across the region and the best chance for more widespread precipitation across the region before the trough kind of pulls through as we get through the weekend. So we'll keep this pattern in place, this one that supports precipitation, rounds of snow across the prairie through the weekend. Then we start to finally see that northerly flow coming in and kind of pushing the trough out of here. You see this burst of stronger flow coming more directly out of the north, and this pushes our trough off to the south, and then eventually 
off to the east across the west, the rest of the uh, the United States here. And then we get, get into this period of northwest flow, bringing in cooler temperatures, drier temperatures, but generally a quieter pattern. So it's about a five to seven day burst of active conditions here before we reset the pattern and kind of look at what's next. So here's the precipitation forecast with all of this. This will kind of tie it all together after we look at the jet stream pattern that's driving it. Again, we start off this week with a chance for some snow, heaviest across portions of central and west central. Uh, uh, this would be central Alberta, west central Alberta, getting into far west central Saskatchewan. So here's the area of low pressure. It kind of sneaks in south of the Canadian border, but the snow along and north of the area of low pressure is where that heaviest snow and some of the blustery uh, winds could be as we head through the overnight into Tuesday morning. So here's sunrise Tuesday, the snow tapering off across Alberta, moving into central Saskatchewan, maybe some light rain near the south, uh, the southern border of Saskatchewan in the United States. And then we kind of reload. The next wave comes in here Monday, or this would be Wednesday morning, getting into Wednesday afternoon. We'll see how far north or south the actual center of low pressure tracks. That'll have an, in, uh, an impact on where the heaviest snow falls. Right now, we're looking at southeastern Saskatchewan into southern Manitoba for this kind of prolonged period of snow beginning Wednesday night. Let me go ahead and jump back here. This begins, thanks for bearing with me, right here, Wednesday evening. This takes us through Wednesday night. And then we see that kind of that strongest push come in Thursday night into Friday morning. We could see some snow that's heavy at times across parts of southern Manitoba and southeastern portions of Saskatchewan Thursday night into Friday morning. Uh, if this all kind of holds together and then as we head into the weekend, this is when it really starts to taper off. We could see heavier snow continue across parts of the northern plains into the uh, Great Lakes. But across the prairie, we would be talking about kind of just colder pattern with some light snow flurries. So once again, if you, if you kind of missed it there, and I have you know, not talked about it in depth enough, snow across southern Alberta and southwestern, west central uh, Saskatchewan, tonight into Tuesday morning, and then it's Wednesday night into Friday, we see the heavier snow shift into southeastern Saskatchewan, central and southern Manitoba, before tapering off to flurries as we head into the weekend. So how much snow? From national, uh, the, the National Weather Service's blended model here, we're looking at total snowfall accumulation over the next seven days. Again, 10 to 15 centimeters, perhaps locally more across central Alberta, getting into west central Saskatchewan. A lot of this falling Tuesday, uh, or I'm sorry, Monday into Tuesday morning. And then as we head into Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we see that next round of snow start to push into this region of southeastern Saskatchewan, getting into central and southern Manitoba, and that is where we could see some of those more significant snowfall totals, perhaps getting above 20 centimeters. Uh, but of course, we'll talk about that more as we get a little bit deeper into the week. As we just kind of look at the next four days, this takes us through Thursday afternoon, the NAM model on the left, the European model on the right. We have pretty good agreement there with our Monday, Tuesday snowfall across this corridor. And then this would be building into the region late Wednesday into Thursday morning. We'll look at the European model, taking it all the way through the weekend. Again, here's our Monday, Tuesday snow. This is our late week snow that begins to stack up Wednesday, Thursday into Friday. And then one final way to look at this, the European ensemble probability of getting more than six inches of snow. That is what we've got here on the left side. So where we see those red shaded colors, that's where we got that better than 80 or 90% chance of getting six inches or more of total snowfall. Again, that's going to be highest across west central into kind of south central Alberta, getting into far west central Saskatchewan. That's Monday, Tuesday. And then as we get into the middle and late part of the week, see that corridor of heavier snow across southeastern Saskatchewan into southern Manitoba. On the right side, we've got the European model, the total precipitation, total liquid precipitation forecast here. Again, just a, a pretty generalized, smoothed out look here at what we kind of see as our ceiling. Again, we're talking about anywhere from maybe 15 to 25 millimeters of total liquid precipitation across parts of you know, central, west central, southern uh, portions of Alberta, anywhere from 10 to 15 uh, millimeters of precipitation across central and southern portions of Saskatchewan. And then those higher totals, the you know most uh, active area likely going to be across southern Manitoba, where we could stack up anywhere from 20 to 30 millimeters of precipitation over the next seven days. With this comes a big drop in temperatures. We will see it begin to moderate after we get through the weekend into next week as we kind of get rid of this more active pattern with that area of low pressure stationed over the area. We will see some blustery winds at times, but as we look at the total wind gusts here, total max wind gusts across the region, 
through the next six days, even as these storms pass through, we're talking about wind gusts less than, you know, 50 to 60 kilometers per hour. So maybe blustery at times, but not looking at any significant winds accompanying this active pattern. But we certainly will see those temperatures continue to fall. That high of negative one today, a high of minus eight tomorrow, minus eight for the high on Wednesday in Calgary, starting to warm up and moderate some as we head into the weekend and early next week. Similar look here in Edmonton, quite cold for this week, a little warmer next week. Very similar look here in Saskatoon, Regina, and Winnipeg. Hope you have a wonderful week. I'll talk to you again on Monday, October 30th.